Plan 31! This is completely new. I don't even remember this being brought up. Code name for an order given to UTIX Organization's 474th Special Operations Fleet. It seems to refer to a certain action relating to the capture of the Zohar. We hope to resolve the mystery by the time Junior is introduced. Why would you even say that? Why? Freaking spoiler game. Not really. There's going to be a character named Junior later. Oh no, I spoiled so much. But, yeah, why would they even write that in? I don't, I don't get it. Pleroma! Uh, this is one of UTIC organization's operational bases. It is comprised of several linked asteroids and serves as Margulis' post. Pleroma. This term and concept can be found in both Jungian psychology and Gnostic tradition. Once again, if you want to spoil the game for yourself, feel free to do extensive research into Jungian psychology and Gnostic doctrine. What do I know, though? Once again, Google at your own risk. Although we will not reveal any answers at this point, it may be of interest to delve further into this concept. It may all offer a glimpse of things to come in the future of Xenosaga, or it may provide some insight into the various themes that appear in the current story. So, like I said, it will round out your knowledge of what's going on in the game, but once again, it could spoil it. You could accidentally spoil it for yourself by looking deep into the psychology and, and, and the Gnostic doctrine and, and finding out what it leads to. And then assume that the game leads that direction as well, and you'll spoil a lot of it. You know what I mean? So, if you want to, feel free. Just, you know, don't, don't spoil it for people that didn't do that, I guess is what I'm going for. Uh, recycler. Individuals who salvage space wreckage to sell, sometimes after fixing them up, to brokers. Uh, laws governing this type of activity vary from state to state, but in general it is considered illegal. Matthews and his crew engage in recycling as a side business. It's salvaging. You can say recycling all you want. Salvaging. Reload. I don't know why this is in here. This normally refers to the act of putting a new round of ammunition into a gun. Thank you, game. Couldn't have figured that one out. Here it simply means replenishing the power source. Once again, not really necessary, but sure. Thank you. I guess. That was informative. Sinir, a planetary member of the Galaxy Federation. Judging from what Cherenkov said, there seems to be a facility on this planet linked to the UTIC organization. That is probably important for something eventually. Seraphim Sisters. Yes, the object of Matthew's adoration. Their name suggests that they are a female vocal duo. Yeah, thank you, Gate. Why is this? Why do they even put it? I don't even know. Uh, so, a panel of researchers convened by the Federation government in 4754, 12 years, no, 13 years ago, 4767, right? That's what we decided. That's what I decided uh, to counter the Gnosis phenomena. Uh, while it is called a subcommittee, it has over 2,000 members representing government agencies, corporations, and various scientific fields. At its operational core are seven members, the Jedi Council, each of whom holds high positions in the Federation. Yuli Mizrahi, Momo's creator, is one of the seven members. Species Preservation Act, also very important. Also, very, very relevant to uh, Ziggy, if you're a fan of his. This is a law enacted in order to revive the human race, which had degenerated due to the harmful effects of the Life Recycling Act, the one that, that was repealed, even though it lasted for 160 years. The purpose behind this legislation was to preserve and propagate a purebred, uh, sorry, pure breed of humans that was untouched by genetic engineering, cloning, or organ enhancements. People that are just better than you. It also strove to restore the original genetic code that had been altered by the Life Recycling Act. Due to the fact that enforcement is left to the discretion of each autonomous state, there is a pointed lack of standardization and effectiveness across the multitude of jurisdictions. In other words, each planet uh, pretty much gets to decide what is and is not a purebred human and what genetic engineering or cloning or organ enhancements technically mean on their planet. So if you travel between planet to planet, there's going to be different standards. Of course there are. Gattaca, Gattaca. Tony! 
He's 29, he's the pilot of the Elsa. Normally handsome and debonair, he completely changes when he's in the pilot seat. To his credit though, he is in fact a brilliant pilot having saved the Elsa from countless perils. Definitely a ladies man. She on. Uh, trade column, I do believe is new as well. The UMN columns are divided into separate routes according to their use. The trade column is a route used mainly by cargo and passenger vessels. During the story, Ziggy chose to navigate through this particular column in hopes that the heavy traffic will interfere with his pursuer's tracking system. Although we don't really see that, he, he references that that's how he supposedly got away. He went onto the freeway or highway or toll road, whatever you guys have. Transfer system is... is this... No, this is, this is new, and we're going to go into some more science here then. This is a material transport technique which utilizes a, an unique feature of the UMN. You're going back and forth game, is it a unique or an unique? Uh, its usage is fairly common in this age, however, transference of materials with amorphous network information, that is, living organisms, is a organisms is considered virtually impossible. This is due to the serious impact such transference has on the actual information contained within these living networks, such as personality and biological functions. Transference of living organism, organisms requires a protective shield, and due to the size of such shield generating systems, it would in turn require the use of a vehicle like a space vessel. This explains why Matthews' ship is both a passenger and cargo ship. So basically, it's, it's a transporter from Star Trek. But they don't do use it on living organisms unless they're in a tube or something, like a ship, uh, because it it needs a shield generator so it has to be like a ship or a life pod or something like that in order to transfer uber humans there's a reason that they go for uber and not super even though they technically well they vaguely mean the same thing i'm sure there's some uh, differences but they, they do use Uber for a reason. During the heyday of the Life Recycling Act, many people opted to undergo artificial procedures to enhance physical abilities or to increase brain capacity. This term is used to describe those individuals or their descendants. Gattaca. Although Allen refers to them as mutants, these gifted individuals do not exhibit any external differences when compared to ordinary humans. Current Federation law prohibits any acts of discrimination against such people, yet feelings of hostility still abound in various corners of the galaxy. The Kukai Foundation not only protects these individuals, but also provides them with a means to support themselves. So these uber-humans, people that are genetically, neurologically, physically better, then ordinary humans are somehow discriminated against, which is the exact opposite of Gattaca, which is a movie, if, if, if you were getting lost when I kept referring to it. It's about genetic engineering. UTIC! Official name, Unknown Territory Intervention and Creation Agency. It's an agency connected closely with the Milchian Conflict, references of which are made throughout the game. It was buried in obscurity for decades, but reappeared in 4767, which is when this story begins. In other words, when Ziggy found it. An independent, well, when they grabbed Momo, more likely. An independent organization not associated with the Galaxy Federation, it nevertheless boasts a level of technology and military force that far surpassed those of the Federation government or military. They're better militarily than the Federation. That's kind of important. Its origins can be traced back to the Mizrahi Neuroscience Institute, which means that Joachim Mizrahi is the agent's founder. However, the connection between him and Margulis is yet unknown, which means that they will tell us eventually, I'm sure. Honestly, don't know if they do, but I hope they do. Why would they, why would they hint at something like that and not go over it? Why data? Very important stuff here. A series of research data left by the late Joachim Mizrahi sought by the UTIC organization and the SOCE, uh, the crap, uh, close encounter, something of close, subcommittee of cl on close encounters, I think it was. 
Uh, in the story, the, this data is said to exist in Momo's unconscious memory, although it is not very certain. Uh, unconscious meaning that she can't access it, even though it's stored in her memory bank somewhere. Dialogue surrounding it suggest that this data is vital to the Zohar project, which I don't think they tell us here. No. See, I, I assume it would go right there, but no, they have not filled that in yet. Ziggy! Ziggurat Industries Cyborg version 8.0. He needs a patch update, I'm sure. Since the advent of reality and technology, all efforts to develop new cyborgs were abandoned. But pre-existing models continue to be upgraded. However, with the enactment of the Species Preservation Act, this, this practice was also stopped, making version 8.0 the last in the Ziggurat series. So there was a time when you couldn't make new cyborgs, but you could, you know, upgrade the old ones. Now you can't even do that, so, so he's kind of waiting to die, I guess. Ziggurat Industries is a corporate entity specializing in cybernetic technology and biotechnology. After the enactment of the Species Preservation Act, it eliminated its ailing cybernetics department and shifted its resources towards the development of nanotechnology. So they work in nanobots and nanomachines now. Ziggy! Born 4637, that makes him 130. A combat cyborg assigned the task of recovering and protecting Momo, the 100 series of observational realian. Upon his death, a hundred years ago, at the age of 30, his body was donated to science, and two years later he was reborn as a combat cyborg. The last rank he held when he was kept was captain of the 1875th Special Operations Command Detachment of the Federation Police Bureau. He is currently appropriated to the Subcommittee of Close on Close Encounters. According to Federation law, upon death, an individual's body is designated as public property. Thus, they are no longer able to control their own fates. Perhaps this is why Ziggy considers himself simply equipment owned by the subcommittee. His thinking is in direct contrast to Momo, who longs to be human. Even though we haven't really gone over that, but you, you can see glimpses of that in Momo already. Uh, Ziggy constantly strives to turn himself completely into a machine through repeated tune-ups that eliminate his human parts piece by piece. He, his looks belie his extremely old age, and his advice gained from years of experience is both practical and precise. His former name was Jan Sauer. Uh, once again, I don't know if the names are supposed to mean something. That one sounds somewhat familiar to me, but hell if I know. Sauer, especially. Uh, 100 series Realia. This one is new. Another name for the observational units. Or series. Yeah, of course. The 100 series system, which combines DSSS and the Hilbert effect, is a brand new technology which was only recently developed. The entire system weighs over 10 tons, making it virtually impossible to scale it down to human size. Thus, the 100 series system that was issued to the military consisted of two parts. The main system, a 15 meter square block resembling a supercomputer. 15 meters, that's over 40, that's like 50 feet. I assume that, it's th that they mean like cube because two dimension, whatever. In a mass produce 100 in series realian as a terminal device, so the, the realians themselves are part of this system. This system and the one installed in Cosmo share the same technology, leading to speculation that the two are somehow connected. What is Vector? I don't see why that would be that big of a deal. And that is finally it for the database, but that is uh, not it for the menu. We're still not moving on, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to look at it. We have, in the segment file, we can see that we have the door, the location, and the key for segment address number 10. And it's in the Cosmo Simulator, which is a very easy uh, part of the game to be in. So let's go ahead and head back there. Uh, into the environmental simulator, into the Cosmo simulator, and this is what it looks like when you go back. 
because we have not done it before, I will try to keep a, a little bit of this on screen. Uh, I don't know if I remember exactly how to get to the, uh, the door. I believe all the all the enemies are the same. Um, there's really not that much of a point of me uh, fighting them if I don't have to. Uh, th the only thing that I am looking for is the way to the door. Uh, everything else has already been obtained. Even the box at the end. Ah, crap. That was an incredibly easy fight. They don't do damage to me. They do literally zero damage to me now. Now, if I remember right, segment address door is down there. But I do have to go, like, all the way around in order to get to it. That's at least what I remember. There might be a shorter path there that I have just forgotten that I've opened up. And they did take out the save point here. Um, this will be the last time I think that I go through uh, the full environmental simulator with you guys after this uh, I'll just like meet you back at the door and assume that uh, you know how to get there uh, but this is the first time through the simulator so I figured it is worth uh, looking at seeing how it works and what does and doesn't stay with you there you go there is segment address number 10 so once again, this is the part that kind of confuses me. I'm with you in the environmental simulator, really, because we have seen all that, and sure, you could record it and all that. How do you know what's in here, right? I never opened this door before. How do you know what's in here? I don't know, maybe that's just me. What do we get for this? We get two booster packs, which is for the card game, which I will do eventually. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to do those... Uh, during the main Let's Play or if I'm going to do those in uh, bonus videos just yet uh, because to be honest it is a rather uh, slow game um, much like much like Magic the Gathering uh, there, there's a lot to it. Uh, it it is a slow contemplative strategy type card game uh, one that I am not particularly good at so I'm I'm pretty much going to wait until I get enough booster packs that I don't necessarily need to try as hard as, as I do in, um, in other games. Uh, for instance, uh, I used to play the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! game. That one was freaking easy. That would just win all the time. Oh, couldn't avoid it. Couldn't avoid it. Okay. If I remember right, I can just head up here and there should be an exit uh, right here because there was uh, before. There should be another one here. There is. Once again, we have uh, fully looted this place before. There's no other doors here that I can remember. Yeah. Pretty sure, like 90% th sure there's nothing here. So uh, we are leaving the environmental simulator and Cosmos is encephalon and simulator, simulator and we will probably never come back. We are fully done with that. And we can go over the uh, the card games later. Uh, once again, the, or all the mini games, I should say, later. Uh, it's, it, it's a bad Armored Core. I know there are some fans of Armored Core out there. I never really was, but this is a, this is a terrible version. <laughs> uh, we do need to head to the shop before I do forget. Uh, we need to purchase pretty much all of this, from what I remember. Uh, no, I already have the fiber suit, uh, but I do need the V2, yes, the metal helmet, I'll probably need, I don't think I need any of those, uh, I, I might be able to use a couple, it prevents if they're attacked down, as long as I got that, I think this is all I need, um, yeah, I think that's it. I, I thought I was going to need more. But really, that is it. And you can buy more card packs here, should you need it. Uh, but, once again, I'm, I'm going to put that off. I don't think there's any uh, requirements that you have to do it at a certain point, or you won't get prizes. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that, so... Um, I, I'm going to avoid it for now, and, and we'll put it off till later. If not, I'll have backup saves just in case. 